What's up, JFusion Fast? This is Philip, and welcome back to another toy review. But this one is gonna be special because we're not gonna do just one, but we're gonna do two figures in the same video. You heard that right, two figures in the same video. Introducing Kamen Rider Geats Sodo action figures. We have the Magnum Boost in the entry raise forms, and yeah. I decided to get both of them because why not? So, you know, let's get ahead, uh, you know, let's go on with the review anyway. Uh, by the way, we're not sponsored. Uh, if you want to sponsor us, you know, <laughs> if anyone's willing to sponsor us, why not? But anyways, yeah, this came from my own pockets. <laughs> so, uh, I am going to do this review, but I'm not gonna feature everything while uh, doing this vi uh, this video, but if you want to see all the stuff that I can do or I did with these figures, head on over to the link down in the description so you can see the gallery, you know, where I did uh, stuff with these figures. So anyways, again, let's go on with the review. So we're going to start off with Kamen Rider Geet's Magnum Boost. So let's take a look at this bad boy real quick right there so let's proceed with the articulation so the head moves way up it does move down uh you can't see it a bit of course uh it can actually tilt side to side as you can see here thanks to the quite uh, lowered uh, collar and because of that you can also turn the head 360 right so uh, the head actually can separate into two halves so you can take off uh, the top half and use the lower half in combination with other riders. So let's say you want to have uh, Buffa in Magnum form. So you can take this uh, lower jaw right here, uh, attach it to Buffa's lower jaw, and you got yourself a Magnum form. So uh, the arms uh, kind of... Uh, you know, uh, do the 90 degree thing, so you can. Uh, if you go any higher, the shoulder uh, parts will pop off, so be careful with that. So there is also the slot or the elongated uh, socket joint uh, right here. So you can actually swivel the arms uh, to the front and back for more motion like this. You know, as you can see, this is the top view. And of course, uh, as I'll show you, the arm can go around 360 like so. And th there's an upper arm joint, you know, to uh, do things like this, right? As you all know, uh, the elbow joints move quite freely. So it has, uh, yeah, actually more than 90 degrees of movement. So the wrists uh, for this uh, particular lineup are actually a bit different because uh, I can pull out the wrists a little bit. It's not probably visible on cameras, but there, uh, there is a gap right there. And with that, I can actually uh, move the hand like so, like a bit of a wrist flick action. But again, you, if you really want uh, like a secure uh, position, then you can just stick the socket all the way in. And of course, uh, you know, that's possible because of the ball joint right there. So I removed the hand, I put, I put it back in. So you can do a bit of a wrist flick action. And of course, uh, because of that joint, it naturally goes around 360 as well. Now, the waist joint, so you do have the belt in the way. So, well, technically, you can spin it 360. Uh, it does push the belt out of the way. And speaking of the desired driver, it can, uh, you know, turn around 360 for a uh, revolve action, if you will. You know, if you want to do the revolve on. So, I, I just set it back to default. So, the legs... Uh, can actually go a full 180 degree split. How about that? And inside, so the thigh joints uh, are kind of covered by the leg armor. And uh, they kind of 
they're kind of pulled out so that uh, this raised armor or this leg right here doesn't really, uh, you know, bump into the waist. And of course, it allows the thighs to roll in place like so. No, there we go. So the knees bend more than uh, about 90 degrees, actually more than that. So you probably can't see because of, uh, you know, the exhaust. So the legs are, or the feet are also on the ball joint. So uh, the legs are, or the feet are quite tight. So yes, they turn around 360 and they kind of uh, also... Uh, move like this. This is actually a feature that I kind of noticed uh, when I had uh, Aguilera. So uh, they kind of incorporated that aspect into this uh, ball joint. So I think uh, this is going to be the standard going forward. So that is Kamen Rider. Uh, oh, not yet. Sorry. I, I almost forgot. So at the back, so you can see his scarf. Uh, well, it is all on a ball joint. There's actually a, another joint, so it's kind of double jointed uh, right here. So this is actually a separate part uh, that you attach to. Now, I did remove the ball joint, but the, it actually comes with this extra part right here. So you stick it back in, and it kind of allows for 360, basically like 360 movement, you know. So 360 movement all around and you can uh, pose the scarf in different positions. So there you have it. Now, uh, again, so the accessory that you see here, uh, by the way, is the Magnum Shooter 40X Rifle Mode. And actually, this doesn't come with this figure. That's why you need to get this one. That's right. The Magnum Shooter comes with the entry raise form. But I'll talk about this later. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not done with this yet. Now, uh, I actually would like to show you guys something. So right here on this side, so there's a hole, right? Uh, it does nothing, but, you know, that's just uh, a design of a lot of uh, Kamen Rider weapons. So like, this is supposed to be blank, but thanks to the stickers that you can see here, so it's designed to have stickers on both sides. So even when with this one, so it doesn't feel like you know lonely or uh, boring like a lot of old common writer uh, weaponry uh, or solo weapons that have only stickers on one side. The other is completely empty, but thanks to this one, again, uh, so this is not going to be so much of a big deal. Now, another feature for uh, this uh, figure, by the way, especially with the Magnum part, so right here, so on the forearms, so there are extra parts. So these actually kind of, uh, you know, pop out you can so you pop them out and you turn them around so you get the arm guns that the uh, geats has in magnum form so i'm not gonna do that in this video so if you want to see that function go to the gallery link below so yeah but again yes you can pop it off turn it around to the front and then you can do the arm magnum so that's uh, Kamen Rider Geats Magnum Boost Form. Right, so let's move on to the ray, uh, entry raise form. So as you can see, so the eyes are colored black, so which is uh, the standard color for, uh, I guess, all of the other uh, entry raise riders as well. So for articulation, basically the same as the previous figure. Uh, you know what it does. However, uh, the reason I bought this is, well, one, uh, it's, it's the figure that comes with the Magnum Shooter, but uh, interestingly enough, it also comes with a, a couple more accessories that allow for some gimmicks. 
So actually what I have here are two more desire drivers. So uh, if you can see them closely, uh, if, if you can't, you can just go down to the gallery. I also have a picture of these two. But yes, you can uh, create two more uh, desire drivers with the Magnum only and the Boost only. So uh, with that, uh, you can actually switch uh, forms, uh, let's say Magnum only with the Magnum top with the entry raise lower half or the upper half of the entry raise with the boost legs. So uh, I also did that in the gallery. So I'm not going to do that in this video, but go check out the gallery so you can see that as well. So there's um, the comparison between the entry raise and the Magnum Boost. So uh, one thing I noticed with the entry raise form, so the scarf at the back seems to be made from, uh, or actually seems to be like painted in a primer, which makes it kind of rough. Whereas uh, the Magnum has like a completely smooth plastic finish. Like it's the same consistent texture throughout. So I did notice that this, it, it does feel like it's been painted on. So uh, it feels different. It's not really, you know, taking away from the function of the figure. It's just something that kind of weirds me out. So I guess a small aspect that I kind of have an issue with is the paint job on uh, especially the Magnum Boost. So like it, you probably won't see it on camera, but the paint job is not perfect. But if uh, it's not really a deal breaker, personally speaking, I've had worse. Trust me. So. Uh, having had something worse, uh, seeing some uh, not, uh, you know, very well done paint job is, you know, uh, has become tolerable in my opinion. So uh, I'd say like for the stickers, uh, the there were some hard parts for me to uh, get perfectly done, especially with the uh, exhaust pipes on the boost legs. And actually, like, these shoulder arms were kind of hard to uh, put on, actually. But nonetheless, I think I did a pretty good job. <laughs> if I were to rate myself with the sticker work uh, for this one, uh, I would say I, I did a 4 out of 5. <laughs> Not to brag, maybe, but, you know, I, I was extra careful uh, while uh, doing the stickers. I mean, this one... Uh, has stickers, yes, but, you know, basically nothing. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm definitely keeping the Magnum Shooter with uh, the boost Magnum Boost. So, yeah, uh, speaking of which, you know, you only have the rifle, not the original pistol form. But I don't mind that because, you know, I, I think the rifle form is the more powerful one anyway. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'm not really complaining. So overall, right, uh, I would give Geet's Boost Magnum a 4.5 out of 5. Like, the issues that I have with this one are so minor, like, I could basically just ignore them. And Geet's uh, uh, entry raise form actually surprised me. Because I thought it's just going to be like a dummy figure. But even, you know, with this kind of design, it still works as a proper toy. You know, it still does what you would expect with a Sodo figure. And thanks to that, you, you know, you have a couple more accessories that allow you to, you know, mix and match even just a little bit. And of course, if you buy more uh, riders and uh, parts that are definitely coming soon. At least the second lineup for this toy comes out at the end of October. 
So, uh, again, you basically can do more with uh, this figure, you know, like the mix and match aspect. I would say that if you buy the Sodo Geats uh, figures, it's definitely going to be much better, in my opinion, than the Revolve Change figures, you know, like the gimmick action figures, because... Uh, you can experiment with other riders. Yeah, the articulation problem, you know, it's not really the it revolve transformation that you can do, but again, uh, you can experiment with other forms. Uh, there are also uh, like the armed uh, buckle forms coming up, like the arrow, shield, chain array, uh, claw, whatever. So they're, uh, they're pre I'm pretty sure they're also coming out uh, soon. So if you want to do experimentations with them as well you can go ahead and do so so there is still potential for this kind of form so i'm giving this one a four out of five so uh, it looks plain yeah uh maybe boring for some but the potential for play is still there so uh, i'm honestly really surprised with the you know how this turned out in general and yeah, it's uh, definitely a fun experience for me. So uh, if you guys like this video, please do leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, and don't forget that notification bell so you get the latest from JE Fusion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.